Hi everyone, Seth Alchemist here. Today, I'm going to talk about the Seal of Solomon. What is the Seal of Solomon? It looks like something like this. It's a sigil that is very, very famous and known all around the world. I'm sure all of you have seen this sigil before. It's used everywhere in different countries, in different traditions, even in Eastern traditions. And it is said that this sigil, and by the way, I even have it here, which is actually the Seal of Solomon. It is said that the Seal of Solomon is a ring that was given to Solomon. So literally a ring, basically what I'm wearing here. It was a ring that was given to Solomon in order to control the demons, control the demons of the underworld, the League of Demons. These League of Demons, they are ruled by seven princes. Their master is Lucifer. These seven princes of the underworld, they rule the underworld, they rule demons. So it is said that Solomon had this huge wisdom and power and knowledge. But one day, some of these demons were causing trouble. They were causing trouble to Solomon's workers. Because Solomon wanted to build the temple, his temple, which is the first version of the temple of Solomon, because there's two, two temples, the first one that was built. So some of these demons were causing trouble to his workers. So Solomon apparently talked to God. And when he talked to God, God gave him a ring. He gave him a ring, the seal of Solomon, and he told him this seal will help you control the demons. And these demons were ruled, as I said, by the seven princes of the underworld. It is said that the ring, this seal, had the hexagram printed on it or imprinted on it the hexagram so this shape is very mysterious how can this shape control demons or the underworld how can it do it and why does it do it so there's a lot of elements to this story and there's a lot of sources but i'm gonna tell you what i believe and what i found out and what resonates with me but feel free to do your own research the Seal of Solomon. Now it is said that the demons of the underworld, they're very powerful, they're very smart. They can teleport, they can pass through walls. Um, they can do supernatural things, which I believe humans can do as well. We just lost the ability or lost the knowledge to know how to do it. But humans can do the same. The gifted humans can do the same. But these demons, it is said that they get trapped in these lines. They get trapped in these lines that you see here. If they look at the sigil, they get trapped. They can't get out of it. And that's how Solomon was able to control them. I'm sure there's more magic involved in this than just the demons being trapped in the lines. I'm sure there's more to it. But in a nutshell, that was um, the purpose of this sigil and it was imprinted in the ring and Solomon went to these demons who were causing trouble to his workers and he told them to take him to their leader the leader of the demons to um, Belzebul he's one of the seven princes of the underworld and his name is Belzebul and in some other traditions he's called Belzebub so either Belzebub or Belzebub and that's how Solomon invoked all of the demons of the underworld, all of them. And he used this seal that God gave him, he used it to control them. And he made them help him to build the temple of Solomon, his infamous temple. So he used the help of these demons because these demons were able to do supernatural stuff. They were able to carry huge rocks 
and carry them from one place to another just by teleporting them. Um, they were able to move huge bodies of water, they were able to fly, they were able just to do things that the humans... It was gonna take his workers years and years and years and years to do this stuff. So he was like, why don't I use these demons to build this temple? And that's what he did. And the name of these demons and their powers is mentioned in a book called The Lesser Key of Solomon, also known as Le Megaton. Check it out, but it's an ancient Greek name. But the other name, the English name of the book is The Lesser Key of Solomon. And it states all of these demons and what they do and what's their purpose. So if you want to know a little bit about uh, this kind of information, and if you want to learn more about the demons, this is one of the best books about necromancy. This sigil is also known in the East by the Eastern philosophy. The Hindus and the Buddhists call it the Satkona, Satkona. And it is like when you go to Hindu temples in the East and I visited many temples and at the entrance, I always saw this sigil at the entrance of the Eastern temples. You see it and it's so shocking and surprising because you wonder what is this hexagram doing in the east but they call it the sarkona and uh, it does represent the harmonious balance between masculine energy and feminine energy the masculine energy they said it's represented by the triangle pointing upwards and the feminine energy represented by the triangle pointing downward, downwards. But they do believe that it's a, um, a divine sigil that is connected to the spiritual realm. So these are very intriguing connections. We have this here, the seal of Solomon that can control demons that come from the underworld and the spirit realm. And then in the Eastern philosophy, it is also connected to the spirit realm. So there's some overlap in here. So that means this sigil is very, very important. The first time I saw this sigil, it just resonated with me. It's just, I didn't even have to think about what is it or what's the meaning of it. I just started, I got this ring and I started wearing it. And it's almost like, I know it gives me protection. I know it gives me protection from these evil entities because of course they do exist um, and I just believe it's one of the best tools you can use for protection is this element it is also I believe that it's the doorway between the physical realm and the spiritual realm I believe that the center the center here is the doorway I believe the triangle pointing upwards and the triangle pointing downwards they're like the, physic, the physical reality overlapped with the, with the spiritual realm when they overlap together. The middle part is the entrance, is the entrance to the world of the unseen. So this is a sacred shape, but I want to bring to your attention another meaning for this. The hexagram has six edges because it's two triangles that have three edges on each, so three and three is six. So the number of the hexagram is six. We also have six points or six vertices on each, on each end, there are six. So again, here in numerology, it represents balance, it represents harmony. In sacred geometry, I see this shape as the most perfect, the most balanced shape out there, but this has another connection to it, this number six, the hexagram. If you, and here I'm gonna, I think the best way to do it is to draw it. I'm gonna draw for you. This hexagram here and show you a connection that I mean. So if we draw the hexagram, triangle up, triangle down, six points, we have six points here, 
right? And then three edges here and three edges here. So the representation is six. Number six is balance and love and and harmony. In numerology, that is the meaning of number six. But I want to bring your attention here to something. If we connect the dots here, right? I mean, okay. If we connect the dots, it becomes becomes a hexagon. So first we have a hexagram, but when we connect the dots, it becomes a hexagon. And hexa in Latin means also number six, hexa. That's also six. Why? One, two, three, four, five, six edges. But I'm not done. So we have hexagram, hexagon, but we're gonna connect more dots. And now I'm getting into the realm of sacred geometry. And I have another channel about sacred geometry. If you'll go, feel free to check it out. I'm gonna leave the link in the description box. We're gonna connect these points here with this point in the middle. And now we have a cube. We have a actual cube. So we have the hexagram, the hexagon, and when we connect the edges inside, we see a cube. And it is known, it is known that around the world, there's black cubes in many, many locations. And the most famous one is the black cube that the Muslims pray to in Mecca. It's a black cube. And that is very intriguing. Why would a whole religion with millions of people Pray to a cube. Why? Why is that? Why? Well, it's because there's something divine about it. It's because there's something that connects to the spirit realm. That's why the hexagram is an important sigil. But I feel like the hexagram is one form of the whole image. Because when you connect the dots, it becomes a cube. And we have number six appearing here again. We have the six edges and then the six vertices. And when you start connecting the dots, this becomes even more connected to these world orders and these these elites and these leaders around the world that use these symbols and these sigils and you start wondering what if there's a door or there is some sort of portal that number six and the hexagram unlocks what if the hexagram and number six unlocks the door to what's in the middle here, right here. Right here. So I just wanted to show you the connection, like how these things work together. There's also another mysterious thing is that um, planet Saturn uh, if you check some images on the internet at the top of planet Saturn there's the form of a hexagon forming with clouds there's a hexagon in alchemy Saturn the planet is the representation of the prima materia darkness where everything start 
where the great work begins. The magnum opus, that's where it begins. It begins with Saturn. Darkness, number six. The hexagram. You see the relations that I'm trying to build here. You see the dots that I'm trying to connect. There's something very mysterious here. And I do believe that it's the doorway to the spirit realm. I also do believe that you can use this sigil in this form to either protect yourself, to control demons like how Solomon did, or to hex people. After all, where do you think the word hex come from? Hexagram. In witchcraft, when you want to hex someone, it comes from the word hexagram, because that's what you use to hex people. Because you want to protect yourself. And sometimes you're going to use some tools to protect yourself. But sometimes you're going to figure out and find out that the only way to protect yourself is to hex nasty people, people who are trying to harm you, bad people, people who are trying to destroy your life, people who are trying to just cause trouble and harm in your life. So what you're going to do, you're going to hex them. And why the word hex? Because you're going to use the hexagram to hex them. You're going to use number six. And this has nothing to do with this, the religious connotation that the Christians use for number six. They say it's the number of the beast, 666. And for some reason, it just got involved and embedded within the religion and everyone is saying 666 is the number of the beast, is the number of the devil. These meanings have been twisted and changed and it's always have gotten out of context. And people don't even know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. Six is not the number of the beast. Six is the number of balance, of love. And it is also the doorway to the spirit realm. And even in quantum physics, I think carbon, which what makes up everything in the universe, when you go to the atom, it's you find the number, I kid you not, six, six, six. But it's fascinating how this 666, or just number 6, or the hexagram, plays a huge role in the fabrication of the universe. But religion, in order to control you, they demonize it. They try to make it the bad guy. So you become scared. And the more you're scared, the easier you're, you can be controlled, if you know what I'm saying here. I'm going to show you in other videos how to draw and how to use the hexagram for either protection or hexing. I'm going to show it so you can do it for yourself. But it doesn't guarantee that it's going to work because your energy has to be powerful and strong enough. You have to know what you're doing. I hope the information was not all over the place here because I said I touched on too many things all at the same time. But I just wanted to share this with you because this is such a mysterious sigil. It's, it's very obscure, yet it's very powerful. And if, if, if you're drawn to it, do your own research. Find what you can find about it. See what resonates with you. And let me know in the comment section if you have anything else that you want to add or your proper opinion about it. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video.